<laughs> in between segments, what we missed was the hookups of the cam and crank signal. So we did some wiring diagram checks. Um, I want to review that with you first. Okay, make sure that we're all on the same page with that. Um, so I actually took a couple of screenshots. And uh, what I want to do first is I want to talk about um, I want to talk about the type of crank sensor that we have. Okay, so if you guys look at this image, it says uh, it's probably a little bit blurry, and that is super annoying. No. <clears throat> I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try again. I think he's done. I think so too. I wanted to point out the crank sensor design on this. One of the things that you have to do when you're connected to, actually I'm missing something here. In our last segment, we said we were gonna check for coil control, right? Yes. We never did. And the reason that we never did is, uh, I'm taking your word for it, but we need to show that. We're, we're gonna show that. I'll show you guys coil control. I have the Pico connected. We have one coil connected. We have the cam and the crank signals connected because in, in light of the timing belt issue, the way it cranks, I thought cam and crank, let's get a relationship. That's the direction we're going. Ignoring at this point the no-com, okay? And the reason we're ignoring the no-com is we have a five volt reference, make sense? I'm not gonna focus on that. I'm gonna stay with what we know. All right, <clears throat> the crank sensor, I wanna point that out up here. What kind of crank sensor is it? It has three wires, so it suggests that it is a Hall effect. However, what they like to do on the uh, Euro cars is they'll add an extra wire which is really just a shield circuit and that's what I believe this is we can have a three wire VRS that is actually a two wire but the third wire is a shield it's just a wrapping around the wiring and I believe that's what this is and you see the dotted line around this too that's also showing you that those two wires are shielded meaning that's the signal and the signal ground. And I think it's going to be a sine wave for the crank sensor. The wire that I picked only because I have other brown wires that are grounds is the only reason that we picked the white wire as the crank sensor positive. I have no designations inside the computer. Welcome to the European market. They don't help you that way. They don't tell you like our other manufacturers what's inside of here. So I'm guessing my white wire is my crank positive. It could be the brown, we'll find out in a minute. And then I look through the diagram for the cam sensor and what I found is there is only one cam sensor. This is dual cam engine, yes? We're not sure. Not sure. Yeah, that, top, not sure. that top cover's loose. Pull that top cover back and just take a peek. Two cams or one? Nah, that's one. One cam, okay, so one cam and one cam sensor, that makes sense. Um, sometimes you can have a dual cam system where they're only putting the cam sensor on one of the cams. So uh, uh, something worth talking about here for a second, if you're doing a, a cam and a crank relationship, could you have the front cam and the crank be lined up? These are right. Say the cam sensor's here, crank sensors here, and then you have your back cam that could be off a tooth or two, but my cam crank relationship could still be right. You guys yeah. follow what I'm saying? Yes. So that is possible that you could still have a timing belt that's off, even though cam crank relationship is good. In our case, we only have one cam, so that's awesome for us. If our timing belt is off, we're going to see it as long as I have a known good waveform. Everybody follow? Yes. Okay. So I was doing some homework again off camera in that um, seeing what type of, of cam and crank sensors are there and it looks to me like this cam, you see the difference in the way that they, they did this. Uh, the cam looks like a hull effect to me, the way it's wired. Notice they don't have the shield. They'll usually shield VRS type sensors more than they do hull effects. So that's the other suggestion that the VRS crank is a AC sine wave. This one is looks like a Hall effect. They're sharing a wire with the fuel pressure sensor and they're sharing another wire, both with the fuel pressure sensor here and here. So what that's suggesting is the cam sensor uses a five volt reference, just like the fuel pressure sensor would, and it's a shared ground. And so then the third wire is my signal and that's how we figure out which one the signal wire is on the cam sensor. 
This is my signal wire, the green and violet, and that goes back to my engine computer. I took this capture showing the two crank wires. Here's the crank wires here and here, and then here is my cam sensor wire, green, violet, at the computer pin 44, and then we tapped in for the crank on pin 35. So that's where we have these. Just point these out to you briefly. Um, I'll let, well, I'll just leave that there. We'll just focus on this. You can see on the computer itself is where we are tapped in, and yes, we are poking holes. The ones that we will fix when we're done, unlike the janky. Correct. Janky? Janky. Um, Jinkies. Wiring, piercing that the previous person was doing in here. Um, so those two channels we'll look at, and then you see the green one over here on the left at the bottom. That is going to my um, coil control signal. All right, let's get this pulled up on the screen. What do we set these up for? Blue trace, I believe, is my crank. That is and correct. I believe it is an AC sine wave. Okay. So I like to leave my zero point in the middle of the screen for those kinds of sensors. And you're not going over 20 volts because it... They can. I've seen them go as high as 50 volts, Shane, Ooh. but not low speed cranking. We'll leave it at 20. Okay. Channel two, we need to turn it on. Set it also, it looks like five volt reference, but I'll leave that at 20 as well. So it give me room to move the picture around. But it's gonna be a... This should be a square wave. Yeah. And we can move that away from there so we can see it. We'll bring that down to here. And then my third one should be my coil control signal. I'll set that to 20 as well. Right. We'll move that up here, just keep these out of the way. And then the Pico, remember the Pico, we could take real long time bases and we can zoom in on different segments. And so what we're gonna do is crank this thing here. Um, I'll set this to, I'm actually gonna set this to like a two second screen. Nope, we'll go five maybe even. Take my sample rate up just a little bit, make sure we're not missing anything. And I believe I'm ready if you are, Shane, to go ahead and crank that. Why did that try to start? I had no idea. Been doing that for a did you wait? Hold on. Did you see what we just got here too? When you what did you see the green? What's the green trace? That's cam, right? No, the green trace is. Oh, that's the control. Yeah, green, green trace is my coil control. But look at it. It shouldn't look like. Should we fire the coil that many times rapidly in succession? No. Is that the right word? Succession? Yeah, sure. Is it? I don't know. Is it? Yeah. That, it might be. That might be a design feature of this system that they're rapidly firing the coil like a multi-strike system. That's what that looks like. I don't know that for sure, but it's doing it there. It's doing it there each time. It's a constant. Every time that coil fires, it's doing the same thing. All right, so we, we have some coil firings. Um, you see the spacing in here though? Spacing's good here, looks about the same, but then the spacing changed. And then, so that, that in itself is concerning to me because this was a steady crank from, from here to here was a pretty consistent crank. How do I know that? Uh, crank as far as not ups and downs like an RPM. Where, where does the RPM change? Where did the vehicle almost start? Right, yeah, it's a VRS that will grow in amplitude as speed increases. So right there is where it started, where the vehicle kind of kicked a couple times. Yeah. Um, I, I don't like that my cam signal, so I have a cam signal here and here. The, the picture's pretty noisy. I'm just looking at this at, at face value. We were correct in our assumption that the blue trace was the crank. Um, but I don't like <clears throat> even consistent uniform cranking, okay? This should be even consistent uniform coil firings. Okay. It's not. Yeah, I'm, I'm ignoring these because we could be getting feedback. I'm just looking at these ones. Right. They all look like they're around the same spot, though. Are they? they so here's my sink notch in the crank. Why, would, why don't you measure it up with the sink notch on the next, next 
we can we can actually do that. Um, I'm just kind of eyeballing here to here, just just eyeball. We'll just use our eyes. We can put cursors in. That looks about the same, right? Yes. And then that looks about the same. Where did it change though? It does. What if we missed one then? It, it's missing. Okay. It is. We are missing one in here. It should be. It should be this actually. See the. Yep. Here, let's go. This one right here. Here to here. See the spacings. Yeah. Right, and then go um, the gap here to here. Right. Yeah. Here to here. So yeah, we're missing one in this area, which should be. It should be that. What that is, I don't know, but we lost control here. Um, good. And let's zoom in on this area a little bit. Kind of tough to do that. Pretty consistent. There's my gaps. Kind of hard to see the gaps in here, but it's right there. The, the gap would be the sink notch in the crank signal. OK. Um, yeah, we're missing one there, have one there, missing one there. So it's like every other one. I don't know. I, I guess here's what I was thinking before we kind of analyze it that far. That looks to me like a cam crank issue. We're getting bad input, so the computer doesn't know what to do. Wouldn't it fire every other one anyways? Because the crank yeah. would have to go. Yes. Would it fire every other one? Well, but it's still missing. It, it should be every other one because if we put cursors in for rotation, which would be from from right there to to right here would be 360 of the crank. And and we should have that coil should fire one time every two two crank rotations. So from that standpoint, we aren't missing one and that's good. But it is possible that this system that it's firing each time almost in a waste spark kind of design until it knows where number one cylinder is. Do you follow that? Yeah. Can I fire this coil if I know by the sink if I know by the sink notch alone that's what's going on. This sink notch is going to tell the computer the exact pair of cylinders. Let's be clear about pair of cylinders here. We have companion cylinders that are going to ride together. That sink notch will tell the computer the pair, but it can't tell it which of the pair. It can only tell it a pair. It. We need the cam signal to come into place to tell it which one of the pair for sequential firing of the injection and for sequential firing of the coils. Is it possible on this system that without the cam signal, the computer may start firing that coil every 360, which would be one time on compression and one time on exhaust because it doesn't know which one is which. As far as are we on compression or are we on exhaust, it would be just like a waste spark coil. It's not a problem. It would fire top dead center exhaust, it would fire top dead center compression, and we could get the car started and running without the cam signal. I think that's what we're looking at right here. We have one cam pulse that occurred here. I know we have noise in this. That isn't even a cam pulse, is it? Um, let's pull this down. That's just noise. That's we have no cam signal here at all. Is the, did you plug it back in? I did. Okay. Um, in fact, do you see the voltage level chain on this cam sensor that it is actually um, a steady five volts ah. on my signal. So is this a five volt pull down design? Is it a five volt pull up design? These are things we need to think about as far as where our problem is. But can you see? that what I assumed incorrectly here, we don't have a cam signal. Can you guys see that? Yeah. And if with, without a cam signal on this system, it looks like um, it can still fire the coils. And that's why we see random stuff going on here. But that doesn't explain why, why we didn't have spark. I want to crank this again. Let's watch it again a couple more times. Uh, let's run that. Wait, hold on. Let me get rid of my cursors. Okay, go ahead and crank it again. Keep cranking it. We have spark initially. See the spark? 
Keep cranking. What did we lose? Okay, that's good right there. Um, very noisy picture, right? Uh, basically grounds. I could turn my sampling down. I could also, nice feature of the Pico is we can add some filtering in here. Uh, this, this can sometimes take away from your picture though as far as detail. So you want to be careful with your filtering, but that would, should help us interpret what we're looking at a little bit more. I like that. What do we see? Cranking here. Uh, we were not cranking it here. So starting in this location, we'll move over to there. What do we have? What's going on? Spark, and then we lost it. Did we lose our crank signal though? No. Crank signal's there the whole time, isn't it? But we never had a cam pulse. When we recheck this, I'm gonna recheck this right now for spark. We should have spark. Which coil are you connected to? Yeah, we should. We should have spark. Let me get you guys, yeah, it should be intermittent. And I don't know that it was. Do you think the computer sees it's not getting cam and it shuts them down? Yes. Can we follow the, uh, the wait? Hold on, hold on. Hold that thought. Hold Checking for spark first. Let me get you guys a view of that. It's very possible that we smell gas. I smell gas. So that means the gas pressure. All right. So I'm just doing a spark. I'm just doing a quick spark check, and I'm going to check for spark right there with my test light. Okay. Good, crank it. All right, there is nothing coming out of this coil. Do that again. Uh, no, it's there, sorry. It's real tiny. All right, do it again. Hold up. Yeah, I, I'm getting, I am getting spark on occasion, but it's very weak. Weak spark. Yeah. We may have some other wiring issues as far as why the spark is weak, but what I just saw there matches what we have, which is we have coil control. We do have spark on occasion. It is not consistent. We're going to have to come back to the coil. At some point is my guess. We're gonna have to come back to it, meaning power and ground, make sure those are good. But our control signal is matching the coming and going of the spark. We have spark here, we lose spark, but what do we know for sure? I have no cam sensor signal, so don't we focus there? Yes. Let's get our cam sensor signal back and then we'll analyze this stuff with the coils and the spark. And it does look like this is some type of a multi-strike system. Do you see the three? Uh, that might be a problem, might tell us something else but it does look like that's what the computer is doing with these coils uh, during cranking because I see the same thing each time. Coil control, cam or crank is there, no cam signal. And like you said, John, without a cam, I don't know if you guys heard that, but John said without the cam is the computer basically just shutting everything down. That's what it looks like. I need to get a cam signal here and see what happens. I'm gonna do some checks on this. Okay go to the connector? Well, this is a, yeah, I'm on the, well, it, is it possible we're on the wrong wire too? I, I'm kind of trusting you guys that we're on the correct wire for the cam sensor. Um, we always have to think of that. That's things I'm thinking about myself. Even yeah, if, even if I am the one that hooked it up, if I see a flat line, no signal before I start attacking the car as having a problem, I want to make sure that I'm on the correct wire. The yes, because the exactly because the wiring schematic would never lie. So John, help me out here, John. My cam signal is green, and which one was my cam? The uh, green. Violet. Green violet. Okay, next to the green violet is a space, and to the right of that is a uh, red with a gray. Is that correct on the diagram? No, Do we I see that sequence? It's uh, green violet, then red and gray. There's no space. Um, on the other side. Okay, but there is nothing next to the cam sensor on one side, correct? Correct. And then next to that on the other side is a red and gray. Correct. So 
so that we are on the correct wire for the cam sensor. So that, that is helpful. Something else, guys, watch up here. I, I'm going to determine circuit design here in a second. Shane, turn your key on for me, please. So did you see that signal go from zero? As soon as Shane turned the key on, you see the si signal go from zero to five? Yes. Okay, I want to know circuit design. And for me to know circuit design, it's as easy as unplugging the sensor. Okay, that is sensor unplugged. We have a steady five, don't we? Yeah. It didn't change. So is that a five volt pull down design circuit? I think that it is. And I could take my test light to make sure I'm on the correct wire. That's why I'm doing this. Not really for any response test. I'm just going to take my test light. I'm going to go right at this connector for the cam sensor. And you guys had this back probe too already, didn't you? Correct. You were on the wrong wire though. We were checking Okay. What did you have across the board on all of them when you checked it? We had five, five and one, and nothing on the others. We should have a couple here, a couple five. So that's one of the pins, no change. This is test light going to ground. Uh, next one, what did that do? Look at the screen. Can I make a cam signal with my test light? Watch. Yeah, yeah, if you touch okay, and then this one is nothing all right so looks like the middle wire i'm pulling that one down the middle wire on this should be the same color it's not uh wait what's the color of the one on the computer green with a okay good the middle wire then yes we're good the middle wire here is my signal and that is the one you guys were tapped into no you're all the way to the right right now yeah. Okay. Um, five volt pull down, just like Chrysler. And with that check of the test light, you just said that the wiring is all good. No. Um, all I know with the test light right now, Shane, is um, hang on one sec. Let me get something here. Okay. All, all I know right now with my test light is we are on the signal wire for sure and it is a five volt pull down design. It's a Hall effect, so the computer sends five volts to the cam sensor and the cam sensor pulls it to ground. All we know is our signal circuit's good. I can't check the five volt ref on this sensor that's shared with the fuel pressure sensor with my test light, because it won't light that test light. That's why I grabbed the voltmeter. My next checks on this sensor would be the reference power, in our case, and ground on that sensor to make sure they're good. And if they're good, we have a faulty cam sensor. Or if this is a system that uses some kind of magnet that triggers the cam sensor, there could be a fault internal to the gear and the magnet, it's not a sensor issue. I don't know yet. We'll find out. That's where we're going. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So just some quick voltage measurements. Got a glare on that, right? Good? Yep. All right. Black leads going to a known good ground, which is where? Yeah, if I got the battery right next to me, I'm going to use battery negative whenever possible. And then I'm about to use my voltmeter for a critical test. So what do we want to make sure about our voltmeter? That my ground is good. So I'm going to connect to the battery. You see why we do that? What do we notice on the screen? I'm connected right to the battery. Oh, guess what I did? It's a good thing I always check my meter. But what I just did, look where my red probe is. What did I tell you guys about using this tool? Always check. Always, when you're done measuring amperage, put this back over here. So guess what? I just blew the fuse out of my meter. But isn't that better than blowing something in the... I could have hurt the computer right here. Pretty important step. And I'll blame myself. I mean, it is possible someone borrowed my meter and didn't do this, but I'll blame myself. I screwed up here, didn't I? Do you guys understand how bad 
this could have been if I would have taken this <clears throat> and went to my computer reference circuit or feed circuit to this Hall effect, could I have damaged the computer? I, it's possible. They're pretty protected, but it is possible. Crazy stuff, man. Always check your meter. I screwed up there big time. Now we'll go to battery positive and check it. Does our meter read? No, it does not. So what's that mean? Fuse has nothing to do with this. Um, what that means is either my connection is bad on my battery cable itself, or I have a bad cable on my, on my multimeter. This negative terminal is loose too, by the way. Why is it so loose? We shouldn't be doing troubleshooting with a loose cable. Why is my multimeter not reading? All right, we good now? Yeah. Only, only now are we ready to do measurements. What do we want to see? What are we looking for? I believe it's going to be five because the wiring diagram showed us the cam sensor sharing a reference and ground with the fuel uh, pressure sensor. So it's as simple as measuring the voltage on the other two wires. We can use the scope to do it, but I wanted you to see it together. My, my two outer wires, by the way, someone was here. Can, I, you see how somebody stuffed a pin in there. Do you see how, how booger that up that is on the middle wire? I don't know if that's showing up for you guys with the contrast. Can you see it now? Look, the middle wire is a signal. You never front probe a connector like that, ever. Because what you've done is you've spread that terminal apart, and when we fix this problem, are we maybe going to have another problem? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. All right, so this is my this is my five volt pull down signal. Let me zoom back out so you see the multimeter. Do we have five volts on that wire? That is my signal wire. Then I should have a ground wire. It should be steady zero, and I should have another five on this according to the diagram. And that's reading low voltage. Why is it three seventy three? Why is that one 422? Uh-oh. I know what's wrong with this car. Do you really? I do. Okay. Um, this is a three-pin connector. It's a Hall effect. It uses a five-volt pull-down design for the middle wire. Okay? Right? Um, then it should have a five-volt ref, and it should have a ground. What do we have on these outer two wires? I don't know which one's which. If that's my reference, my reference is low at 422, okay? And if I go to this one and that's my ground, my ground is high at 373 or vice versa. Either my reference is low at 37 and my ground is high at 42 or 44. You guys follow what I'm saying? What do we have? What's wrong with this car? It has a bad ground, a bad sensor ground. Now it's important that I know which one my sensor ground is. We need to go back to the wiring diagram. You guys following this? Yes. That's super awesome. John, what do we got? I don't have the, I just have my screen image here. Here, let's look at this. Let's look at this one. My cam sensor. So the two shared wires, I can't see it on this diagram, but shared with the fuel pressure sensor on those two. Okay, guys, look, we talked about this. You can see it. You see the dotted line here? Yeah. It's shared between, so this wire right here, Hold on, couldn't that be the reference though? We can share references. Yeah. Here's why it can't be. Because it goes through the thermistor. 
There you go. Very good, Shane. So that wire, because the splice, there's another splice here. This is the other one I'm talking about. This circuit is spliced and goes between two sensors. Which one is that? That is the five volt ref, okay? And we know it's a five volt ref because the fuel pressure sensor, pressure sensors use a five volt reference. So we're using a five volt reference for the cam sensor as the feed for the cam sensor. <clears throat> the ground, we know the red wire wasn't the uh, five volt ref because it's shared with two different thermistors. This is the ground circuit right here. That's where my focus is going to be. That means we're gonna have bad grounds across the board. This also means we are going to have a communication problem with this computer system. Ah. We're not gonna... Uh, it's all starting. Sensor grounds go where? Do they go to the block? No, they go to the computer. And then the computer grounds externally from there. This potentially has faulty computer grounds. So we could confirm bad sensor grounds by grabbing a couple other ones, but I need this wire color. John, this is blurry to me. What color is this? Is that brown? Blue. Brown and blue, okay? Back to the car for a second. You guys follow what we're doing? Yes. Too old. Isn't troubleshooting awesome? Yes. I love troubleshooting. I think this is fun. And for those of you that don't, that's okay. You're just giving me more work to do. Kind of glue. It's all kind of goobered up. That would be a main splice, probably in a harness, probably totally normal. I'll look at that a little closer in a second, John. Okay, what what color is my sensor ground circuit again? Um, brown and blue. Brown and blue would be the one. Okay, so it's the one on the end here, guys. The brown and blue. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Kind of. Well, you will on the regular one video when this is done. I think the brown and blue back probing this is my wire that reads the 4.2 volts you see it so what do we know now about our ground circuit well we already knew it was bad but our ground circuits the one that was reading 4.2 and the one that was reading 3.7 is a low reference voltage so this not only has a bad ground guys how is my 5 volt reference at 3.7 it is not good you guys with me on that? Yes. Okay, um, let me make sure of something here. Listen, at 3.7 volts, we, we need to be concerned about the five volt regulated circuit, right? But do we attack a five volt regulator when we know we have a ground issue? No, we're, we're gonna stay on the ground path. Make sense? Okay. Um, if you guys need to roll for lunch, feel free. I'm going to keep going. I want to keep rolling here. Okay. Rolling so stay with me then. Bad ground. I want to confirm that ground because our wiring diagram told us that it was shared with the low fuel pressure sensor is what, it's, what it called it, right? Okay. So could I grab this same ground just to see? Could I grab the same ground at this connector? These are weird. How do these work? Do, do they push in? Oh, they pull down. That's weird, okay. So what color again? Brown and what? Blue. blue. Brown, blue. So I have a brown and blue on the end of this sensor right here. So that would be this side on the front, okay? Not stuffing this in there, just touching it. How's my sensor ground? What's that reading? Can you see it? Four point two. It's the same circuit. It's a bad sensor ground. You guys follow? Yes. Okay. So we have a. It's. In other words, it's not just affecting the cam sensor, is it? No. Is it affecting other sensors on this car? If I would find any other sensor, you said what again, brown and blue? Yep. Let me just see if I can locate another one. Um, yeah, if I knew where that was, right, just, that might be this, that's the throttle. 
Again, if I knew where that was. Uh, ECT is down here. No, I, I'll, do, I'll do the ECT, which is over here. And uh, yeah, it should be the same. What do we see? This is on the ECT. What do we see? Yeah. yeah. Guess what? No wonder he couldn't fix his car. All right, so is our bad ground then, can we plug in our bad ground with, wait, let me ask you guys a couple things. Our, our bad ground of this 4.2 volts, and that's my multimeter right now, guys, is on a hold. See, it says hold. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not connected, so maybe you're thinking, why is that reading 4.2? Because when it shuts off and turn it back on, it does that. Um, we have bad grounds across the board on our sensors. I measured the coolant sensor, I measured the fuel rail pressure sensor, and I measured the cam. Why do we have a crank signal with a bad ground? Very good. It creates its own voltage. So you see we're knowing and studying about a VRS kind of helps guide you there. That's why we have a crank signal because it makes its own voltage. The rest of these sensors are all dead and that's why the computer is probably not talking to us too. So rather than going through the harness trying to find a bad ground to a particular leg of these sensors, it makes more sense for us to measure the sensor ground wire at the computer yeah. next, yeah. okay? And if it's good at the computer, then I have a harness issue externally. If it's bad at the computer, then what? Bad computer or? Bad computer, uh, external. Bad computer external ground, very good. <laughs> Shane. Okay, why are you laughing? The way you said it. Because it's freaking. Bad computer external ground, very good. Good. I was listening to you and your comments, both of you, John and, and Shane, you guys are on it and it's freaking awesome. I love it. All right, so the next step is what? Find pin 14. Pin four, <laughs> find pin 14, help me out here. You guys helped me, you did very nice with the cam and crank. Um, is it on the same connector, John? Um, it doesn't tell me. No, no, is it on the same one? Yeah, same. Oh, okay. Computer. Same uh, computer connector? Yeah. So okay, let, here, we'll use channel three for this. Okay, can I disconnect it? Uh, is the key off? We never want to disconnect the computer with the key on. Just pull it out, or just push it in real quick. No. Push it in, pull it out. It wasn't me. So yes, as long as the key is off, you may disconnect it to locate my computer oh, ground. The other thing is we can't take the key out. I don't care about that. Yeah, well. But he has another ignition of Mars where they can't get the key out either. 14, is it brown and blue? Yep. Yeah. Found it. Nice. Give me a, a back probe reading of that. And plug that. <laughs> We want to plug that back in too, Shane. I knew that. Because we want the circuit loaded. Is the computer grounds loaded with them unplugged? No. This would be a nice loaded circuit um, question here. Let's switch that. We don't need that up on the Pico. We'll just use our regular multimeter for that. And take this off of hold. And right now, can we see that? Make sure we're seeing our multimeter good. Make sure we see Shane's hairy arm. I'm not Italian, I promise. That works. We, um, we don't have the key on, so you're looking for voltage. This is a good lesson on why you have to do loaded circuit ground tests. Yeah. If the key is off, is there any reference voltage going to any of the sensors, John, Shane? No. Okay, so if the key's off, you're not loading the ground. Right. Turn the key on, the ground is loaded. <laughs> You're such a dork. 12. What is that? Pretty. That's ridiculous. Are we sure we're on the same wire? I, I'm guessing that you just crossed into a different circuit that maybe you shouldn't have. I, I want to see four volts there, not 12.
Just be careful. There it is. So your 12 volt reading, you see how you have to be careful it with, went, you got to be careful with T-pins. Yeah, that's uh, actually, and this is what you just did right there is why manufacturers will actually tell you to never, never back, back probe because you could have cooked that computer if you would have taken that sensor ground circuit and crossed it over to a feed. Like a Thanksgiving I, I, Yeah, I mean, but guys, look, this 4.2 volts, <laughs> I, I missed the Thanksgiving turkey. I, my mind's on something else. And yeah. later when I'm editing this, I, I would think that that's funny. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah. Right now, as I'm thinking, uh, I'm excited more about this car than your I am goofy jokes. I'm excited as well. Okay, 4.2 4 volts on this sensor ground circuit yeah. at the computer tells us what about the entire sensor ground circuit externally. Do we have to dig in and find any opens out here? No, we do not. We have power ground issues or we have a faulty computer. Remember someone was in here doing things that maybe they shouldn't have been doing. Yeah, and the computer was, I mean, sitting yeah. out like that. Yes. It was, getting, it was all water. Yeah. Um, if it was me at this point in time, I would probably ground that circuit just to see if I could make the car run, but, just because it would be cool. Yeah. Um, we could do it. Yeah, why not? I mean, Here's the thing though. If we have a bad power ground, it's still not going to run, even if we give the sensors a ground. Yeah. Do you follow that? Yes. So if I do this test and the car runs, yay, we'll probably fix this thing. Cool, we still gotta find our bad grounds externally. But if I do this test and the car doesn't run, we're still in the same boat. So it's really kind of a useless test right now. Yeah. It's just one that would be cool to say, hey, watch, I can make this car run. So what are you gonna do just, I mean, well, I could, well, what I would normally do is use my ammeter now, but yep. being that I blew my fuse in my ammeter. Yeah, and you're not getting mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would, that's how I would do it. I mean, I'm pretty sure my ammeter's dead. Um, uh, I don't think that that did anything because, anything changing in there when I, when I ground that He's circuit? Like, no one's in there. You got that, John? Anything on the dash, like changing it all? No. Okay, my ammeter's blown. I, I gotta get a jumper wire. We're gonna try it just because. Okay. Just because. Because, 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 because. This is Mission Impossible. <laughs> love, love, troubleshooting. I thought you were gonna say Mission Impossible. It's so cool. Okie dokie. That looks like a ground point right there. What do you think? Yeah. I agree. We'll use that. Maybe not. How about we use that? Maybe not. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm just going to ground it up here at the pin on the computer. And we watch it goes yeah. down to zero. And then we just so kind of see if the car starts. Wait, cam sensor's still unplugged. Oh, wait, should we go back to the Pico too? We, we can. We, we can. We'll do that, but just let's see if the car runs first. And by the way, you guys understand that we are no longer on a bad cam sensor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we... Yes. We had a um, we, sure we had we had no signal on the cam, but you know, a good lesson on checking powers and grounds right yeah. there. Okay, try it. Let's just see what it happens. I hear injectors firing that I didn't hear before. Do it again. All right, hold on. I can hear lots of things clicking. Just want to see what kind of solenoids, and what kind of spark we have now. Again, this test doesn't really answer us because I really think we have a bad power ground. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, same kind of thing with the spark. Um, we could do what. Uh, Shane asked, and that is to see what the Pico looks like as far as the cam sensor signal goes. We're you smell that? No. 
What are you smelling? It smells like something might have been burning. It could be. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't think so, though. Okay. We're just on a we're just on a sensor ground. Um, go ahead and uh, crank that, John. Reds our cam. Reds the cam. Go ahead. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, <laughs> isn't that cool, though? Yeah. Isn't that cool? That uh, is cool. We have a cam sensor signal back. We have some activity. But again, we kind of made something work external. So what if, I don't know if I can, if I can make sense of this for you, but here's my computer. I, I'm suspecting that we have bad computer main grounds, okay? All of the sensors have a shared ground that's external, okay? And there's other components in here that would use that ground too. But then there's other components over here that these guys need these main grounds, right? And then there's a connectivity between these two guys, okay? Yeah. What did we just do? We just got, we just made this side work properly. That's why we have a cam signal here yeah. now. And we're not hooked up to the coil number one control anymore. Oh That's yeah. There's nothing there. We could look at coil one control. Just letting you know. We should. We can just because sure. just from a cool factor, we can hook back up to coil number one. But from a standpoint of where do we go from here in troubleshooting, this is bad ground all the way. That's cool that we could create a cam signal by jumping our sensor ground circuit. You gonna put me back back on there, Shane? Yeah. I think it's gonna look the same because. Um, because. No, because I put the test light on it and it looked the same spark wise. I'm ready when you are, John. Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Okay. Cam, crank, no control. Did you hear when the vehicle tried to start yep. that we had some control? Yes. So I, I'm not worried about that. Um, would you agree with me we need to fix our sensor ground issue? Yes. Which we need to check our main computer grounds now. And so the way to do that, it, this sucks on these. What is beeping? It's coolant, low coolant. All right, kill that key for a second. This is not fun on these Euro diagrams, guys. This is not fun. Because they don't, give you they don't tell you. Our, our domestics are very nice. I need to sit here and do this. You're just going to see the top of my head. I could duck. Um, what I have to do is I have to look at this line by line because nothing is designated in here. There's nothing in here to tell me sensor grounds, but I can see right off the bat on page one. Do you see this guy right here? Yeah. See that loop? There's yeah. three wires. I want to check that first. So okay. it's as simple as, let me zoom in on this now so you can see it. Um, on the firewall, brown, brown, and brown. I want voltage readings on pins one, two, and four. And that's going to be with the key on. I'm going to guess this is the other connector. Yeah, it's the one that's Well, you got one, two. Oh, yeah, right there. All right, hold on a second. Let, me, is, uh, let me transfer everyone over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, no, I'll leave that. What well, is, um, you want to see, so. I mean, I'll go. One, two, four. One, two, three, and four. No, no, yeah, so brown, brown, red, white, brown. Well, I mean, we got brown, I, brown, white, brown. I need the key back white. on. Key back on? Yes, please. That's what we have. Keys back on. Watch your melon there, Shane. Watch your melon. melon. We'll have brown, brown, red, and white, and then another brown. Yeah, I'm seeing that, but th that's not what we have. Well, remember our coil colors were wrong, too. 
Right, but we do have brown brown. So, and then the fourth one, which is a little different, is yellow brown. white. Let's take a, white our jump on this. Let's just get a reading on on one of these brown pins right here with our multimeter. Like the, oh, that's a perfect one. Okay. Point one two. How's that ground? Well, less than 100 or 200 millivolts. Yeah, I mean that's uh, point. Actually, that's point zero oh, one sorry, two. That's, that's, that's 12, 12 millivolts. That's great. As long as I'm on the ground. What are the colors again on one two and brown brown? And and my key is on, correct? Yes. Brown brown. The next one, and then skip the. Skip one and be another brown four. Yeah, that's what it says, but it's yellow and white. Point one. Brown and then skip one and then it goes yellow white. So yeah. I don't I don't like that. I don't either. Is that possible we're on the wrong wires? Or is it possible it goes one two seven. red and white four? That's how it is because it goes three. one two three four five six and then these continue on. Okay, so, so it is this brown right here, red white brown. I can't see from my positioning, Shane. Here, take this. There's there's another brown. Make sure you're going straight in. Do not cross that. Okay, those are all reading essentially the same, 0.11. Yeah. Those, 0.12, those grounds are good. All right, so we need to go back to the computer and see if there's other grounds on this diagram. All right, mm -hmm. so what we need to do is go through this whole thing and look at it. You want me to stop for a minute, Shane? I don't want you to miss any of this. I'll be right back. I, I, I let's, let's do this. Let me stop it here because okay. we need to take a break real quick. Um, we'll identify the wires. We'll show them when we come back. We'll identify them over there, and then we'll start everything back up again. Okay, good. We'll stop it right there. Yeah, this is a good intro, me picking my teeth. I was thinking, yeah, eating the goldfish crackers on the mic would be awesome, too. You going to stand up here and help me? Did you say help? YouTube's going to hate big time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you guys are laughing. We're introducing part two, and Shane felt that necessary to come here and stand next to me. I he, was asked. He likes me so much. <laughs> So, okay. all right, are we ready? I'm ready. The rest of you guys ready? Uh, I'm ready. Uh, ready. Whoever's left in here, I should say. We, yep. we kind of took a break and other people are doing other things now in the shop, but we're gonna finish this, right? We want an answer. We need this car out of here. This is the last day of the term that we're in the shop. Yeah. So yeah. Let's all right. do it. Let's do it. Okay, goodbye. Okay, go away. <clears throat> in, <laughs> stop. <clears throat> <clears throat> no, it's the tranny shop. We have my our transmission um, class that builds transmissions is right next to my classroom, and that's what we get. Anyway, if you look at as soon as I start talking, he's going to be beaten on that again. The second I start. All right, let's try that again. That's so screwed up. All right, I'm, I'm just gonna talk over it. I'm not gonna sit here and wait for that all day. So I, I just want you guys to look at the speed sensor on this. And what you'll notice is it's a three wire. <laughs> Can you ask them what they're doing for me? Hey, what are you guys doing in a class that I'm not in and I'm not a teacher? So I went in there and great, powerful Mr. Gator. He said, who? I remember you yelling at me because I was cutting stuff over there. Did I? Last, was it last semester? Sorry. I was cutting. You were cutting for a long time. I know. I was cutting a lot of uh, metal. A cutoff tool. <laughs> you should just go to lunch, then. You should do this while we're at lunch. That way it'll be really quiet. I'm so sorry. You should just go away. <laughs> Yeah, but you can eat later.